In this video, we're looking at dogs that are fearful of strangers. You're gonna get some tips on things that you can do that can help them and some things to avoid doing that can make the situation worse. My name's Nikhil and welcome to Canine Care Obedience Training. In this video, you're gonna meet Coco. She's a 12 month old female copy, delightful dog. She was rehomed at four months of age and she's kind of been apprehensive or fearful of strangers since about six months of age. Her owner, a delightful lady, enlisted the services of a trainer a while ago. Unfortunately, he was an old school trainer who advised that when Coco was reacting to people coming into the house, to send corrections down the lead to the collar by giving her a yank and by using a harsh tone to tell her off. Now, when he realised that this wasn't working, he then suggested the next best thing to do would be to use a shock collar. I'm a modern trainer and I use positive reward based methods in training and they get fantastic results. Training has gone a long way since the dark ages of using pressure to gain compliance and we now motivate and reward by using things that dogs enjoy like food, praise, physical affection and play. All in all, a much better paradigm to work with. <coughs> Let me pose a question to you. If you were fearful of something, and every time you encountered it and you showed that you were scared, someone would either shout at you, they'd thump you or belt you, and in worst case scenario, they'd zap you. How would that make you feel about the whole experience? It certainly wouldn't help me. Would it help you? Opening the door, I meet Coco for the first time. I've asked her owner to see if she can get Coco to sit or at the very least take food. As this seems to be the case, I move a little closer. Now, notice I throw food away from me and slightly behind Coco and I do the same again to pose no threat to her. I'll let her come to me at her own pace, which she does pretty quickly. Now, I'm really surprised at this point when I ask her to sit, she sits down as I ask her the first time and takes food from my hand. Now notice here that she gets up immediately, moves away and starts barking at me again. After a short break, I go out in the garden again. This time Coco's reaction is much more vigorous. It's not good, so it's time to abort. Dogs can be fearful of many things. They can be scared of the vacuum cleaner, they can be scared of cars or trucks or buses, they can be scared of hoses and lawn mowers, and a lot of their, their fears are based on poor early life experiences. Things they haven't encountered when they were young or things that they've had bad experiences with. So it's really important to socialise your dogs well and when they're young. When you're dealing with fear in a dog around anything, it's really important to follow these simple principles. Number one, develop trust. Without it, you have nothing. Number two, make the experience positive. Make it enjoyable for the dog to do. Number three, let the dog make choices. If they don't want to engage, don't force them. And number four, and this is really important, one that's often overlooked, is let the dog go at its own pace. It will tell you when it's happy to move forward and it will tell you when it's had enough. If you find this video useful, please stick around to the end to get my top tip. And let me know what you think of the video by leaving a comment, liking it, and if you really like it, please subscribe and hit the ding dong to get notified when new videos are coming out. One of the things we can do that often helps dogs a lot is to crouch down and face away from them. Here I'm trying that with Coco and it seems to be working really well. She's coming closer to me and spending more time in my personal space. I'll wait here now to see what happens next and she comes back towards me again, sniffing for some treats, which I'm happy to give her. She takes the treats and moves away, a short time later returning back into my personal space and taking more treats. And at this point she moves right round the front of me as a sniff of my hand and steps away, a small but significant step. When you're dealing with a dog that's fearful around people, do not do these things. Do not move into the dog's space. Do not put pressure on them by backing them into a corner. Avoid sudden movements. 
always let the dog make a choice for itself if it wants to come and say hello to you. I never ever approach the dog. I always let them come and say hello to me. I give them the choice. I've been crouching down for a while now and decided to stand up as Coco was away, but as you can see, she immediately barks and moves over towards me. I crouch down again and I wait. I want to see if she'll come back to me this time again. She sits down really nicely with her owner. I wait, I watch, I've sped this little bit of footage up because I want you to see what happens. And a short time later, she comes back towards me and back into my personal space. I'm building trust all the time. I'm really happy with the way that Coco's been going, so let's let her off the lead and give her a chance to make her own choices. She comes over pretty quickly, takes a treat, even sits down and looks very relaxed. I throw a treat off to the side because I don't want to keep any pressure on her to stick around. This is something I thought I'd try. Now she's gaining more trust with me, I'll see if I can get her to follow me for a while. She does, but then she moves away again. Okay, quarter over to you. Some things are always worth a go, but now it's back to barking. <laughs> We're having another go here, this time with Coco off lead. I come out of the door, I turn my back to her and crouch down. Sorry about the shaky camera work. The good news is that Coco comes over straight away for a short moment and then leaves, has a bit of a bark, and then we wait. We wait, we wait, we wait. Great news here, Coco after a bit of time comes back over again and makes contact with my hand. This is very important and very significant. She's volunteering herself to be in my space more readily all the time. She sits on my second time of asking and moves away again. I decide to stick around and wait and I've left this video running so you can see what actually happens. She comes over again, takes more treats and then sits down when I ask her to. This is good, but she leaves again. I keep the camera rolling, I've sped it up now. You can see she's sniffing around. An important moment here, she comes over to me in a very relaxed fashion, stays in my personal space for an awful lot longer than she ever has done before. In fact, I speed the video up here a bit, so it's not too boring, but it's such a moment and it's well worth waiting for. She sits when I ask her to, I throw some treats, she moves away, and then sadly, it's back to barking. Modern training is based in science, but when you're training dogs, it's part science and part art. It's a creative element that you bring to the table that can quite often get you further down the track and give you forward movement when you hit a blockage. When you're training, you need to be objective in your assessment of what is happening. Are things getting better, are they getting worse, or are they staying the same? And if they're getting better or worse, by how much? When you're trying something and it's not working, you need to adapt, you need to problem solve, you need to take another tack. And after working with Coco for a while, we'd made very little progress in the backyard. So after talking to her owner for a while, she told me that she's much better with people, men, out on the street. So that's where we're going. Heading out on the street, I have no expectation about what I might expect, but I'm quite surprised to see that Coco comes over to me straight away. She comes back and takes treats, readily sits down. Look at her face, it looks so relaxed while she's taking the treats. Open mouth, soft face, a big smile on her dial. I've got one too. I'm loving this moment. It was not what I expected to happen. I wait now to see what happens next and crouch down. She comes back to me immediately again and hangs around and now she starts to sniff my arm. This is a major breakthrough. It says a lot about how she feels about me. So I return the compliment by giving a bit of a stroke but not for too long. What I want to do is see what happens after I finish stroking her. Now I stop and I wait. She has a bit of a sniff down on the ground 
walks around behind her mum and then the most amazing thing happens of the whole day. She comes over and sits down next to me. <laughs> I feel pretty special. You came and sat down next to me. Hey, I feel very special. Do you see that yawn there? Now, yawn's a sign of letting go of a bit of stress, yeah. right? Trying to calm themselves yeah. down. We're on a bit of a roll now, so let's try moving back towards the property and going to the front garden and see what happens there. Hello, you. Fantastic response from Coco. She comes up to me straight away. Okay, so this seems okay. Yeah. Let's go around the back. Yeah. So the question is now, if I come in through the back with you, what's her reaction to me going to be? Hello, Coco. Pretty, pretty good. Yeah. Coco. <laughs> Coco, come on. Sit. Oh, you're so clever. Hey, you ready? Oh, you what a clever dog. Things will be going so well, let's see what happens in the house. I'm absolutely amazed that Coco comes straight up to me, right in my personal space, happy as can be. What a great way to finish the session. What are you doing, you cheeky dog? <laughs> so here's my top tip, guys. To be a better trainer, you've got to be a good listener. Dogs are always talking with their bodies. It's their body language that tells us everything that we need to know. All we have to do is listen with our eyes and interpret what we see, and then we can react and act appropriately. Hope you found this video useful, guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe, leave us a comment. See ya. <laughs> You're gorgeous. Now I feel really special, hey? I do, I feel super special. You accepted me. It's only taken an hour and a half. <laughs> hey? Your mum's very good.